Hey you guys, thanks for watching. It's Jason and Allison. Hi. We're coming at you today from on top of a mountain in the Yungia Valley of Ecuador to bring you the second part of our review on the Autel Robotics X-Star Premium Drone. Now in the first part, we did an overview of this drone and basically I explained why I bought this particular drone over one of its competitors at this price point, like a DJI or, or one of the others that are out there. So if you're not subscribed to our channel, make sure and hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss out on that or maybe one of the other videos that you might be interested in. All right, now if you look around me, this is a perfect place to fly. There's no power lines or anything that could give you magnetic interference. I mean, it was a serious hike to get up here. Right, Allie? It was a serious hike. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it was worth it because it's a nice, safe place to fly. There's some beautiful scenery and it's a perfect place to show you guys how to set up uh, this drone for flight and to show you some of the features once you get it up into the air. First thing you need to do, remove the gimbal holder. Don't forget, it's really easy to forget. I've forgotten also, but if you turn on the aircraft with the gimbal holder in place, you can damage the gimbal, so be careful of that. Now, Altel redesigned the gimbal holder, but the one I purchased came with the older design gimbal holder. It's kind of a pain to put on, it's really easy to take off, but make sure you take this off before you power on the aircraft. The next thing you need to do is to install the props, which is pretty straightforward. Each set of props is color coordinated with the colors on the motor. These motors right here have red dots on them and the others are black. So you know at a glance which one goes where. And each prop has the direction of the threads printed on it. So going like that. Once you've done this a few times, it's real fast and easy. It just takes a couple seconds and you're, you're ready. All right, you guys, now I've got my phone placed in the mobile device holder and I'm ready to power on my remote. It takes a long press, about two seconds, and the remote will power on. I always power on the remote before the aircraft. Now, after a few seconds, you should get a pop-up window on your device asking for permission to communicate with the app. There's my pop-up window. I'll allow that. So now you get the opening screen and you can see it's looking for the aircraft. So at this point, I power on the aircraft. Long press on the battery, aircraft powers up. So you can see, hopefully you can see that. Now the, um, the app is recognizing the aircraft. These are paired. I hit start and that should give me my, uh, my menu for flying and I'm gonna open up my configurations to do my final configuration before flight. All right, you guys, now I'm gonna calibrate the compass. Real easy to do following the instructions on the app. Hold it out in front of you like this. Turn around a circle till you get green lights. And I'm getting some errors. These are not the green lights that I wanna see. If that happens to you, you want to take it into account if you have some metal objects around. I'm going to move all the stuff away and try this again. All right, let's try this again. Green lights. Turn it down. Get a little dizzy here. A little dizzy. Green lights. That's what I want to see are those green lights. Just so you know, the difference was I had a tripod uh, laying down outside of the frame where you can't see it, but uh, that was the issue. So if you get compass calibration errors, make sure you don't have a watch or keys in your pocket or something like that because that will cause problems with the compass. All right, now I'm all ready to fly. So I've got myself, my compass calibrated and uh, anxious to get this thing up in the air. Altel's included some really nice shortcut buttons on their remote that make flying a drone as easy as it can be. This button right here is hold to start motors. So I get the rotor spinning, long press, and this one is hold to take off and land. So a long press. After takeoff, the drone will hold a steady hover at around four meters or 12 feet while it waits for your commands. Now the app has a beginner mode, which limits speed, distance, and altitude, and that's definitely where you'll want to start off unless you're a real experienced drone pilot. The app also has some autopilot modes, which are super fun and useful, but they won't work in beginner mode, so make sure you master the basic controls before you take it out of beginner mode and jump into the autopilot modes. 
The orbit mode is super useful for taking videos of a point of interest like yourself, an event, or just something cool looking. You can set the altitude and radius of your orbit in the app, but you can't change the speed of the orbit, which is a feature I would really like because I find that with a really wide orbit, the movement of the aircraft is nice and slow and smooth and the footage comes out great. But when the radius of my orbit is tighter, like 50 to 80 feet, for me, the speed of the aircraft is a little bit fast and it, the footage comes out a little jerky sometimes. Now you can slow down the aircraft using the sticks, but no matter how delicate a touch I use, it just doesn't come out as smooth as I would like it to. So uh, with tighter orbits, it could be a little bit smoother and slower but in general, orbit mode is one of the most useful and fun features I've found. The waypoints mode is super useful and it's just plain fun. You basically just tap on the map where you want the drone to go and it flies the route that you've told it to. One way I've used this in the past was for a real estate video. I set up a route along an access road leading to a property and it just made for much nicer and smoother footage than if I had tried to fly that route manually. Now one disadvantage I found with waypoints mode is that the footage often ends up being kind of jerky when the drone reaches one point and recalculates the route to the next point. The last autopilot mode is called Follow Me. Now, Follow Me is designed to make the drone follow a subject at a specific altitude and distance. It's a super fun way to show a moving subject, especially when you want to show off the surroundings. Just make sure the drone has plenty of altitude to clear any obstacles, and since you probably won't be watching the drone as closely as usual, it's best to use Follow Me mode in wide open spaces. Now as far as range goes, Altel lists the range of the XDAR Premium at 1.2 miles. And in my experience, you can get that and even more if you really want to push it. I've seen people in the Altel Facebook groups um, saying they've got much more with range extenders. But I will say that for myself personally, I get a little bit nervous when it gets over half a mile. And the reason is, that's the point at which I've noticed that I get a lot of video interference messages and I've even lost the RC signal several times. But it'll definitely do the stated range and even more, but be prepared to experience uh, some signal interference at those longer ranges. All right, you guys, now I've had about 50 flights with this drone, so I think I'm ready to give you my honest assessment and recommendation. Now, as far as the pros go, the quality, the reliability, the camera, the customer support, the whole package, everything you get at the price point, it's pretty hard to beat this drone. If you want to hear more about that, be sure to review my other videos and subscribe. You don't want to miss them. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the disadvantages. All right, first of all, optical avoidance. That's the major feature that DJI drones have that Autel does not have. The next disadvantage is the yaw control. I would like that yaw control to be a little bit smoother or at the very least to have a sensibility adjustment sort of like they give us with the gimbal. You can rotate or um, change the speed of rotation uh, on the gimbal and it's really nice because you turn that down and then your videos come out nice and smooth. It sure would be great to have something like that for the yaw control. Uh, another disadvantage, is video interference. I've noticed I get a lot of video interference messages and that makes me a little bit nervous. I have lost the RC signal a few times, but fortunately there's some great fail safes in this drone and it'll pretty much just fly home. But the last thing I wanted to mention, and the most serious, is that I have actually lost GPS signal twice flying this drone. And what that means is the drone is basically uh, floating up there at the mercy of the wind and if you have line of sight and you're an experienced pilot, you won't have any trouble piloting back in. But if you have it out to where you can't see it, or if you have some strong winds, or maybe if you don't have uh, enough experience to be able to control the drone without GPS, that's potentially a very dangerous situation. But let me give you my, my final recommendation. You know, at the, end of, at the end of the day, would I buy this drone again? And the answer is yes. Even taking into account those uh, disadvantages that I just mentioned, I would definitely buy this drone again. Everything that you get, the whole package at this price point, and most of all, Autel's customer service. If I could do it again, I'd definitely buy this, uh, this drone again. I've had a really good experience with it. All right, 
Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Please hit that thumbs up button before you go, and I'll see you guys next time.